We have a very active setup ahead with a significant dip in the jet stream that's going to cause multiple days of severe weather and very heavy rainfall. Plus, out in the tropics, the Caribbean looks to get active yet again with another potential storm heading into the Gulf of Mexico. So let's take a look at the setup going forward. We've got the Gulf of Mexico is open for business, guys. There's a lot of warm, warm temperatures down there in the Gulf, and we're going to have a significant dip that's going to be coming out of their western regions, diving into the four corners, and we've got a lot of lift out ahead of it. And that is going to tap into that strong southerly flow. Once it saturates all layers of the atmosphere, it's going to be in prime condition for setting up multiple rounds of severe weather and heavy, if not sometimes heavy, extremely heavy rainfall over portions of the Southern Plains. So if you take a look at the setup going forward, here is that kind of horseshoe dip trough that we'll be diving in. And it's pretty amplified on the back side of it. So as it dips, there's gonna be sending multiple pulses of energy. These little short waves will be coming across on the Southern flank. And on the right side, that's where the most significant storms are likely going to be setting up. And then you've got colder and snowier weather in the Rockies back behind it. But going forward, we've got multiple days with a lighter setup today, but it really starts to get going, heading into Saturday, going into Sunday, and then Monday could be a big time setup event. And then we'll be looking for the tropics too, because there could be a, yet another system coming out of the tropics because if we look at the overall setup on the tropical aspect here's where we stand so this is the cool front that brought the rain over the plains uh for halloween so that's likely going to be fizzling out but then we'll be watching this more significant trough that's starting to come in from the pacific northwest and then out in the caribbean it doesn't look like much but right now the national hurricane center is eyeing this activity here and also eyeing this activity here. So what's gonna happen is we've got a high pressure ridge, ridge of high pressure that's locked over the East Coast. These will likely be steered towards the West around that high and pulled into the Gulf of Mexico. So we're gonna be watching this as we head into early next week. So right now, there's three areas of concern so we've got one out here actually a 40 percent probability of likely becoming a storm if it does you can see it's not going to be impacting any sort of land whatsoever closer to home is these two little entities we've got this one down toward towards the bahamas and then we have this one down here towards south of jamaica that is now a 70 percent probability it forms into a tropical system these will likely kind of somewhat merge together but all systems go with a ridge of high pressure that's locked over the east coast that will likely keep these pushing westbound so yes definitely a concern we could have an area of low pressure trying to develop in the into the gulf of mexico as we head into the middle of next week so going forward here's your overall dew point so yes the gulf of mexico is going to be open up for business so we got the trough coming in so all these brown shaded areas that's where you got the more the, the kind of the drier air so your dew points are less than 50. the green shaded areas is your moist more a little bit more unstable air so at least 55 or higher so a lot of these are going to be in the 60s if not almost 70 down further south it's got plenty of moisture to tap into and this dry line is going to start getting active and as it gets active we're going to start getting multiple rounds of severe weather so heading into saturday kind of looks like this we've got this trough going to be digging in and the further it digs the more amplified it's going to be coming once it ejects out into the plane so it's going to be a little bit of a slow mover because this is going to be having pulses of energy back behind it kind of recharging itself sending pulses that come kind of these what they call short waves at ahead of the main system and that was that will be likely setting the stage for those multiple days of severe weather so if you look at the overall temperature anomalies you can see it a little bit better of the kind of the sharp gradient in temperatures with the colder air mass the colder temperature is aloft and then this the the warm more unstable southerly flow that's coming out of the gulf and surging well north really all the way into canada so this whole environment across the central and central plains 
is going to be a prime setup for multiple days of severe weather and it likely gets going a small part today but definitely heading into tomorrow through west texas western oklahoma those areas into uh, K kansas region so right now the storm prediction center is highlighting a slight risk for severe storms through the Midland region. And they also have a tornado threat out there as well in far extreme portions of West Texas. Getting into the Lubbock region, those would likely extend into the Texas Panhandle, those areas into Amarillo, and eventually swing further north into the Oklahoma City region. As far as the severe weather goes, and then you would likely have heavier rain because you know, that southerly, that southerly flow off the Gulf of Mexico, that is going to moisten all layers of the atmosphere. And this is pretty high climatologically for this time of year. You're talking two, three hundred percent of what you would typically see in the first week of November. So this has an op a potential to drop some very heavy rainfall, if not torrential rains at times across the across portions of Texas into Oklahoma, as well as into Kansas, getting into Nebraska. So heading into Sunday, as that trough amplifies a little bit more, that's going to be kind of widening in, and increasing the severe threat going into your Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening time frame for those areas in the San Angelo region, back into the Oklahoma City region again, still in central Kansas. And those would likely include now areas into Tulsa, into the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you know, heading into the afternoon. But another concern is the extremely heavy rainfall. So you're talking areas that have just really been bone dry as of late. And now you're going to get the deluge coming down with uh, the water content values about 1.7 inches, which is extremely high for this time of year. But nonetheless, we do have a moderate risk for excessive flash flooding down up there into the Oklahoma City region does include uh, Tulsa, those areas into Joplin, Missouri, extending far north into Topeka and then further south down there in portions of North Texas, getting into the Wichita Falls region. So this a setup would likely produce very heavy rainfall over the coming days and it's a compounding effect. So heading into Sunday, Sunday night, this is kind of what it looks like. So you've got the snow on the backside of the low, that's the colder side of the storm with this area of low pressure around the Four Corners region, dropping some, some heavier snows across those regions. And then out ahead of it in that right front quadrant, that's where the all, the, the greatest lift is, you know, to be concerned about. That's where you're going to have potentially all three modes, definitely a significant hail threat with this and damaging winds and some isolated tornadoes within extreme portions of north texas especially into the oklahoma region getting into kansas and points further north through all the way up into uh, iowa getting into wisconsin still really unstable as far even further north as well so but yes it's going to have a lot of higher water content value a little bit of unusual this is actually about the 95 percentile given the time of year we're talking in the first week of november this is not may so this is november now and yeah to see something like that a 1.77 inches potential per hour that gives you an idea that it has the capability of flash flooding and that's why they went ahead and issued that moderate risk for excessive rainfall because it could get out of hand short in, in a short amount of time and especially with those dry soils like they are because it's just been so dry the atmosphere is not going to be able to soak it up quick enough. So it's going to be a lot easier. It's kind of like the desert, right? A lot easier to flash flood in that type of scenario. So uh, uh, yeah, kind of a dangerous setup coming forward. It's going to be coming in pretty fast and furious. But yes, definitely heavy rain. We're looking at the K index. I mean, anytime you see like a 30 in the orange shaded area, that basically implies heavy rainfall but anytime you see kind of a, a red shaded area down here into portions of north texas that could be very heavy rainfall so there's a lot of potential in the atmosphere literally from texas all the way up into wisconsin through michigan this whole line could be under the gun on monday for for potential a stronger storms if not heavy rainfall 
with just a conveyor belt of moisture because the dip in the jet stream by then is going to be cranking. I mean, you can see that 92 knots, that's about 100 and five miles an hour. So we're talking 17,000 feet up in the atmosphere. The upper level winds are gonna be cranking at 105 miles an hour and a little bit lower, about 5,000 feet. They're gonna be right at about 73 miles an hour, right at hurricane force wind. So that's a 40, 40 uh, you know, mile per hour difference, folks, of changing winds directions just within a 12,000 feet radius. That spells trouble, folks. So you've got changing winds at height with potential for tornadoes within that atmosphere plus the colder air aloft will be conducive for large if not some very large hail in portions of say oklahoma and portions of texas so yeah the setup on monday is definitely looking a little bit more intense than what we could be seeing on saturday or sunday because right now and this could even be a, a, a morning into an afternoon event. This looks to be a more of a daytime event instead of, instead of a nighttime event getting going uh, right here in North Texas back into the Oklahoma, Oklahoma region. So right now we've got the comparison between the Storm Prediction Center as well as the SIPS guidance. Yeah, you can see where we're at. Day four, this far out, we've got a widespread slight risk for severe weather for much of North Texas, East Texas, getting into Central Texas, through Oklahoma, Oklahoma City again. So you're talking three days in a row in Oklahoma City, back into Tulsa, into Little Rock, back up here into uh, Springfield. So yes, this definitely has the potential to go enhanced at least as all this dynamics will be coming together but that will likely be the main event as the buildup will be building up to that and you know heading into that Monday afternoon time frame so but overall if you combine all that together we're looking at a very wet air mass coming out of the Gulf of Mexico that will be opening up for business with all that water vapor transporting well into Texas Oklahoma there in Kansas at as portions of Arkansas getting into Missouri you know, Iowa, get into Illinois, Wisconsin, back into, uh, you know, portions of, you know, Michigan there. So you're, we're talking some very heavy rain potential. Notice the dry slot, right? You've got the dry slot for much of the Northeast. I know you're begging for rain. Unfortunately, you're just not going to get it. Much of the Carolinas that really hasn't seen much of anything since Hel Helene. And even the Southeastern regions hasn't really seen much since Milton and even Florida. But that actually might change because of that system heading into the Gulf of Mexico. So let's talk about this. So right now we're looking at some of the ensemble guidance and they've got, you know, a lot of, lot of members are starting to come together. Remember the area right here is right here, down, down here towards the far extreme portions of the Western Caribbean. Plus we have another area of disturbed weather here. So all this with the high pressure here is going to propagate further west so this should likely merge into these areas of low pressure and then by then with the cold front potentially coming down this could swing it northeast so that was the european this is the overall gfs ensembles kind of implying the same thing somewhere around this vicinity we could be dealing with an area of low pressure in this in the portions of the gulf by the time we get into next wednesday or thursday of next week and you can see what we're talking about there by then. So by then we'll likely have a cold front coming down from the Northwest with more snow on the backside, right? If that cold front does come to fruition, then that would likely steer what was what would be right here further into the Southeast and into Florida with this more precipitation bringing back. So whether it forms or not, we're still looking at some heavier rains moving back into portions of the southeast, potentially Florida, portions of Alabama, getting into Georgia, back into the Carolinas. So this would be a week out, but that's kind of what it looks like right now as all the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together with the, uh, the tropics may not be done just yet. And if it does get named, it would be named patty so guys i appreciate you guys watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update why i protect you before and after storm